Waveboard is one of the most powerful examples of how flexible scour controllers can mix and match control of different devices from different brands. And for the large part, this is because of the pre-made configurations we have developed for a lot of those audio devices that uh, you know already. But it's also possible to build something from scratch. And most of you won't, some of you will. And in this video, we'll take a quick look at how it works building four pages of audio control for a Digico mixer and an Atom video switcher. Just plain and simple to inspire you for how you can take it to a much higher level on your own. This is the waveboard. It is currently connected to, let me see, yes, a Digico SD12. And we will add an Atom switcher straight away. So what you see here is the reactor UI, which is running straight out of the waveboard, even though it is currently uh, it doesn't look like much because there's no colors or anything in the displays, but it will happen in a moment. Let's just search for all the devices we found on our network. I want to connect to the ATEM 2ME constellation right there. Okay, that is in fact the uh, video switcher I also have the software control open for right here. So that's great. And we have the Digico that is available to me on TeamViewer here. So this is the UI of the Digico. The WavePod itself, usually what you would do to control stuff would be to pick the generic audio control. This is what we'll not do in this case today, but still, I just quickly want to show you that we are actually very close to uh, doing something quick and simple here. So if I add input channels for device ID number one, that is the number here, audio channel number one, I already have fader control actually of a channel inside of the, um, the, the Digico. So you see there's fader control down here on input channel number one. I can turn on and off uh, solo. Um, uh, is it? No, this is muting. Uh, solo is up here. Yes, and muting is here. And that is also clear if I knew this better. This is the, um, the, um, the balance of this channel. I could keep going like this and actually it's possible for me to do the same for the ATEM switcher real quick. So if I added this one and said, I want rather to have some ATEM audio channel control, again for device ID number one, because for the ATEMs, that is the device index we're looking for, and then uh, audio channel number one here, then we will see from within the ATEM environment, I can do basically the same thing. Now, this is just quick. This is what we have covered in other videos. But in uh, today's video, I want to just remove that configuration and do something entirely on our own. Let's create a custom configuration here. Freestyle, my freestyle. Okay, we'll now go into the configuration tab. And what you see here is our um, graphical representation of the waveboard. It's now possible to simply click any element and then assign behaviors to it. So if I go to the Digico, if I search for uh, faders, like, let me see, we'll probably just select the channels, no main channel, just fader. And now on the first one here, I have a fader assigned. Maybe this already works. Let's just check it out. You see it is actually, yes, connected to this one. So that was pretty quick, right? I, um, I want to do the same to the fader next to. Just assign it to a different uh, input. So maybe two. And that's number three. And then here. Actually, I can basically copy and I can paste this one onto the next one. So if I click here, you see I can just change this to four like that. That's pretty easy. Now let's drag across these up here and then uh, assign actions to this. So in this case, we would do something like uh, balance for, let me see. Um, for channel. Pan. Okay, there we go. And uh, it now has channel number one. But if I open the batch editor, I can walk in here and just change this over like that. So now we have basically balance for the four first four channels here. You see how that works out. And if we go over here, notice these tiny numbers right there. And as I am turning these knobs, it works. And what about the faders? The faders work as well. So this is really going great for me. I have quickly assigned functionality to the faders, to these up here. Maybe I can do the same for this one. If I select those and I associate mute, channel number one using the batch editor, click here, one, two, three. There we go. Will it work already? 
Uh, muting is the tiny little indication you find right there. So yes, it actually does work. Now, um, we are used to using a red color for muting, and it is also possible. So if you click this one, you open this one, show more, you get into more information and you open default feedback. And inside of this one, you can basically pick a color like red. And now it is red, okay? So it is red whenever it is, it's red all the time. Maybe that's not what we wanted actually. So now we actually need to look at, pay a little closer attention because there's something called conditional feedback. And this one is active whenever this value has its, what does it say, its default value. So the intensity is on down here and that is where we want to put in the red color. So basically now it is white when it's off and it's red when it's on. I think that corresponds probably to what we wanted inside of this one. Yes, that's pretty good. Now, I don't think we have a batch editor to do exactly this. So if you want it, then you will have to do this manually for each one, which is, I mean, it's just quickly done. So no, no harm done here. It's uh, quick and easy. And it gives you the possibility to make variations if you want to, but also to make mistakes if you want the same or the over the place. Anyway, I want to take you to the next level because what we have, have in the bottom is like navigation. We have background. We just did this on the panel. But now I want these keys to give us access to multiple pages. So let's just make a second page. We we'll call it page two. And we'll turn off transparency because I want you to notice what happens if I go to page two, look at the panel, it blanks out. So now I have a clean slate and I can put on it whatever I want. So I'll just pick my fader here and then we would go to the auxes instead. No, wait, let's, let's, ah, I think dragging cross faders might not work as well. Let's try. Nah. <laughs> okay. So we got to do this one at a time. Um, we'll find the, um, the, the channels and in the channels we will, no, wait, it was the auxes, right? So we'll just do fader here and we should now have fader control of the auxes. Let's go back and see if we can find the auxes. It's on the right screen right here. So, uh, and ah, okay, I know there's something with how this is mapped. We need to look at it here. Find the auxes, they are there. Look at that little fader thingy. It is actually moving. Okay, so that's great. We can copy and paste this. So copy and paste and paste and paste. And now, we could quickly change this to become aux one, two, three, four by simply changing these numbers, okay? Let's see if that corresponds with what we are seeing right here, okay? So I'm moving this. No, I don't see this is still kind of controlling the same. So somehow I did not manage to correctly leave those fields, but let's just try this one again. Three, enter, and two, enter. I was a little bit optimistic on how it would pick up these values, but let's see, one, two, three, four and the fader response if you look at the graphic there in the corner yes it is actually pretty accurate exactly as we wanted to and i could configure now of course all my my buttons and knobs and so on but i want to make another page once again here let me see um yes there's this issue of transparency and i want to introduce it to you because that's like the default the default is actually if you create a new page and notice now that i go to this page they will it, th that will change, but it's because I'm on the background now and now I go to page three and there's really no change because what you see on page three is what you get on the background page. So the background is like a layer underneath and if you create a page on top which is transparent, it means that only the elements that you change, like this one, let's make that a fader for, okay, channel number five, okay. So channel number five on this fader, and of course we could do the same for this one for muting. We would also do that for, no wait, that was the wrong one, for channel number five. All right, so um, we are now on channel number one, but this one is changing because, let's go over here, let's check our left side. So on the background page, here, let's just confirm. We have fader action. Yes. Muting. I go to page number three. But these faders are still two, three, and four. But this one is number five. Okay. So what we see is that page number three only 
overrides this fader and this uh, button. And that is indicated when you go to the page, you see those two are the only ones that has a green border around them. If we go to page two, on the other hand, it blanks out everything. So that's the difference between a transparent page and a non-transparent page. We also want to add page number four. And we now have those four pages and now we want navigation, right? It's very important when you create navigation that we do it on the background page in most cases, especially now that we have two transparent pages, but you'll see that in a moment. So if I go to this one and we go to the navigation down here, go to page, then I will make this value go to my background. And then, uh, yes, of course I could copy and then I will paste, I will, I wonder if I can actually paste like group paste. Wow, yes, you know, I'm surprised sometimes as well what my development team did while I was sleeping. Okay, uh, so um, should we get adventurous and maybe try to mark all of them and use the batch editor to do this? Nah, okay, it seems like these values could be changed in this fashion. So maybe we wanna do it like that. That's probably going to be successful. Okay, it was not. Um, let's just go in here and then do it this way. Ah, okay, it's because the label, the label, it is actually changing the pages, you see. Now, uh, we can test it right away. You see page background, page two, page, th page three. Ah, there's a reason why this is happening. Let's go to the background page and then go to page three and page four. What happens on page two? On page two, we created a layer that overrode everything. So now there's no menu. And that was maybe a bad idea after all. So this is why I really want you to consider using transparent pages because if you just know how they work, they are so awesome because you could have like your menu navigation fall through to your background page and then only you change the elements that you really want to override. But there's a way out of this. We can select these on the page too and we can delete the behaviors. And if we do that, we are going to see that we just knocked the hole in layer two, right? On, on page two. And that hole is knocked through so that regardless of which page I'm on, my navigation here is falling through to whatever I put on the background page. And this is also where we saw that if I wanted to change the label, um, page, I will just use page one, we'll just write it like that, okay. And change this one, page two. And page three, and then finally, page four, all right? So now I think we have that in place. We have the labels nicely here, and we can put other stuff that we care about on the last pages, uh, page three and page four. I wanna show you that we can do something called a multi-behavior, and that um, could be a little bit fancy um, in, in, in this case. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's gonna be useful or not. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But anyway, we'll just click this one and then say, let's adjust uh, channel number six. All right. So what I can do here is to add a behavior. I can basically add a behavior to now also control another channel like channel seven. Okay. Are you curious how this works? Because I am. And I'll explain you how this is intended to function in a moment. Okay, so what fader was it? And what page should we be on? We are on page four, and this was assigned to the first fader. Okay, so this guy. We are now controlling both channel six and seven simultaneously on this fader, all right? On this layer. So if I, if I, and now probably if I pull one of these, nothing is going to happen, but something will happen on the other one. Now, let me show you something really fancy. If I put in a delay, like five or one one second, thousand milliseconds, okay. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. Okay, are you ready? Okay, it sounded more fancy than it was. But they are actually sort of delayed, you know, in their response to this. Okay. Okay. 
it doesn't look as cool as it was intended to be. But basically putting in a delay between these two. Let me just remove it again. Okay, because we have these two moving along. Okay, that seems to work fine. It's just while I put in this delay. No, wait. Ah, the feedback. Ah, that was a bad idea. For the first one, it's a bad idea. Let's put it in on the second one. That's better. Okay, like this. So I adjust the first channel and then the other one is kind of following along with the second delay on what I'm doing. Okay, it seems to be slow, but it's also not meant to be like this because where you would use this kind of multi-behavior is in cases where you are sort of building up macros in a sense. And uh, using it for analog components like a fader is, is kind of ridiculous. So it's, it's more useful for buttons where you want to do stuff like um, on an ATEM switcher, you could do a cut. And hey, didn't we add we have an ATEM switcher as well? Yes, we do. Okay. So, um, and again, now I'm really kind of spoiling the whole thing because I'm doing something which is not very likely to be a real scenario for you, except you would do it on a different button on a different panel because this is an audio panel. And we have many other panels that are you know better for this particular exercise that we are going to do now. If we go to, uh, okay, program preview, we could select program preview on an ATEM switcher here. So let's just make this a program row on ME row number one, input number one, batch edit this, set the input number to one, two, three, and this could be our preview bus. So now, ooh, now we added it to these. Um, maybe I need to kind of one, two, now I'm holding down a modifier key. That will also be a cool way. So actually I could have done this with the faders earlier on. I was just not able to imagine that we could, ooh, wait, put it here. Yes, one, two, three. So now we have that assigned to it. And no, it says multiple inputs. Okay, that is okay, 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 okay. So, um, being here, we have the constellation and we can go to the switching side of things and you see that these buttons are actually able to do uh, switching on my uh, ATEM switcher. But the point of the multi-behavior would be if you took any of these uh, knobs like, like this one, uh, we could also imagine that we wanted to add a behavior that whenever you select your program, you're also doing this on an auxiliary bus. So we will do the aux output and then um, we would make an aux output select we would pick the auxiliary channel and we would also pick the input probably to be the same here. So now we have, now it's starting to make sense, right? We have program select, we have aux select, and uh, the, the feedback that we get is coming out of the program select action. If we change that over to aux select, then you will see that the um, it, it will be blue because the action we just selected is generally using blue as the on color for the, uh, for the aux bus. So that sort of makes sense that it, it does that. And that is what the feedback means. If you turn on custom feedback, it is blank. You've got to build this yourself and you have to press the little uh, pencil icon here so that you can set a color for it or whatever you want to do and um, build a, a custom feedback on this button. So now it's, it's amber, it is uh, like full on for whatever it does. And, and that's basically what custom feedback means, that you can uh, put an icon in a display or whatever. Uh, but you can also rely on the feedback coming from one of the actions inside the multi-behavior as this demonstrates. I think I want to basically copy this. So let's do a copy and then uh, paste action onto these. Paste, okay, so I need to check these. And probably now we need to uh, edit these to just check because we are not blessed with the same level of automation that we had a moment ago with the batch editor, I, uh, I'm afraid. So, um, but this should do as well. So, okay, program, and then we'll also pick now um, input number three and uh, do the same for the auxiliary here, input number three, and then we do the same here Okay, number four, and four, five, four, thank you. All right, and then this one, just checking, because I want to make sure this works as it's supposed to do. Okay, it seems pretty good, actually. Yeah, and I get the feedback from the auxiliary, which is fine. Let's check it over here and then um, just notice what happens here on this auxiliary output. So, um, ha, okay, I am changing my program bus 
But there's something about the auxiliary which I'm not super happy about because I didn't see... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry about that. But we are seeing the change to the uh, auxiliary here on the... Um, uh, it, the, the auxiliary is called Kumo 1 uh, on this output. It's actually possible to now demonstrate again that we have this delay functionality that we can put in. So if I put in 1000 milliseconds here as a delay preceding the recalling of the auxiliary select, let's just try that one out. Like this, and then finally here. What you will notice is that there is a delay between these things. So let's pick number two. And you see delay? Yes, cam number two on auxiliary. Delay. Cam number three. Delay. Cam number four. And so on. And um, I think that delay is probably respected all the way. Duk, duk, duk. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. So it's kind of, you know, it keeps track of it <laughs> in its memory. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you got clever on freestyling your config on a wave board with a Digico switcher, sorry, audio mixer and a video switcher from Blackmagic Design. You can of course do that for everything that you can connect into Reactor. There are so many devices you can add and uh, mix into your configuration in this extremely powerful way to control all your broadcast and AV setups.